Hi there. A few people had posted questions about the LA paradox on the discussion board, and so I thought I would use this short video to do a step-by-step -step demonstration of the paradox and explain why exactly it is a paradox. If you recall, this was the original problem statement. In the first problem, the first choice that participants were presented with, option A was a 100% chance of getting a $1 million. Option B was a gamble, 10% of 2.5, 89% of 1, and 1% 1 chance of nothing. Uh, in the second problem, uh, the one that had a yellow background, uh, we had two gambles. 11% uh, chance of 1 million, 89% chance of, of nothing. Uh, that was the first option. Uh, and the second option was 10% chance of 2.5 million and a 90% chance of zero. Now let's take a moment to think about each of these two gambles. In the blue box, uh, here's one line of reasoning. If I'm faced with this choice, I'm going to say uh, option A is a certain 1 million. Option B uh, there is a small but a, a clear chance of getting nothing. I'd look like a bit of an idiot if I chose the gamble and gave up a million. And so one line of reasoning would say uh, that people are going to go for option A, which is a safe option. It's a million dollars, uh, no questions asked. Uh, and so the prediction would be that a lot of people might pick option A. Uh, in the second problem, the yellow box, um, now we are comparing two gambles, and if you compare those two, uh, first let's look at the probability. Uh, in the first gamble, you have an 11% chance of winning 1 million. Uh, in the second gamble, you have a 10% chance of 2.5. The difference between 10% and 11% doesn't seem very large. Uh, the difference between 2.5 million and 1 million is very large. Uh, and so the prediction might be that people would pick uh, option B uh, in the second problem set. And that's exactly what Maurice L.A. found in his research. Most people pick option A uh, in the left-hand side and the blue box in the right-hand side and the yellow box uh, people pick option B, which by itself is not a problem except for the following argument. Uh, that the problems in the blue box and the yellow box are essentially identical. Now, why is that the case? I'm going to start rewriting these two problems. And in particular, I'm going to focus on the two lines that I've highlighted in red uh, on both sides. Uh, option A, 100% chance of a million dollars in the blue box. Uh, and one of the outcomes of option B in the yellow box, a 90% chance of zero. Now I'm going to rewrite those two as follows. I'm going to take the 100% chance of 1 million, and I'm going to break that down into an 11% chance of 1 million, plus an 89% chance of the same 1 million. So functionally, it's the same. I've just broken it down into two separate outcomes. Likewise, on the right-hand side, uh, the 90% chance of getting nothing, I've broken down into an 89% chance of nothing and a 1% chance of nothing. Again, functionally equivalent, just for the sake of clarity, I've broken it down into two separate lines. What am I going to do next? Uh, I'm going to start with the blue box and I'm going to look at both options and I'm going to identify a feature which is common to both. And in this case, it is the 89% chance of winning 1 million. It's there in option A. It's also there in option B. And then I'm going to take that 1 million in each of these two features and replace that by nothing. In other words, I'm going to cancel out an 89% chance of 1 million both from option A and from option B. So now, guess what my problem looks like? I've simply replaced the 1 million and with, with 0. 
And now if I compare the two boxes, left hand side in blue, right hand side in yellow, you will see that they are essentially identical. In fact, they are completely identical. Voila! Right? Now, this is a paradox. It's a paradox because you have two options or two choice sets, two problems, which are functionally identical, yet in one case, people choose option A. In the other case, people choose option B. That is Alley's paradox.